good morning students today we are going to discuss design procedure of helical springs professor patil order professor patil already conducted three to four sessions on spring he might have discussed uh, what do you mean by spring uh, spring it's a uh, elastic machine element which deflect under action of load and uh, return to its original shape when load is removed then uh, functions and applications of the springs you know very well springs are used to absorb shocks vibration in vehicle suspension or uh, railway buffer spring then springs are used to store energy maybe in clocks toys movie cameras or also used to measure the force and which is in uh, weighing balance or scales again here in some of the automated you know the machine element springs are also used to apply force and control the motion also these are some of the application might be discussed by professor vk party then types of spring here the basically in this topic we are going to discuss helical compression and extension spring and the lip spring there are again you know the few classification but it not part of our syllabi as well as the curriculum also then uh, in the helical spring generally it's the most popular spring generally used in many applications and you have to further classified into two one is the compression spring and extension spring even though it's a compression helical spring or extension spring but they are not even the force is acting on it they are not subjected to compressive stresses or a direct tensile stresses but they because of this what is going to happen to, uh, shear stress is going to torsional shear stress is going to induce in this whatever may be the name helical compression or extension but you have to remember these points uh, torsional shear stresses are induced in the spring wire try to understand and similarly another type of spring is the torsional spring may, may be torsional but it is not subjected to torsional shear stresses uh, during that time you will find resisting bending stress which is going to induce uh, in a uh, torsional see a uh, torsional uh, spring try to understand whatever the name or title of the spring somehow confusing but don't make confusion you should know very well and already some of the you know the terminology associated with the spring that is small d is the wire diameter then a capital d i inside diameter of the spring d outside diameter capital d is the mid diameter the spring index that is so capital d by small d you know the ratio of capital d by small d capital d means mean coil diameter to the small d means wire diameter is a spring index and spring index is a important parameter it plays very important role in design of spring i will elaborate or discuss all the things but uh, we should have some recap of the topic then and then it uh, will be easy for us to discuss the design procedure of helical springs again another important point how to take the value of c that is spring index and you know very well the it in the range of 4 to 15 but it should not be less than 3 or should not be greater than 15 what would happen if spring index is less than 3 because of this what is going to happen curvature effect is going to increase and because of that stresses are going to increase in the spring and such a spring is very difficult to manufacture and when c is greater than 15 that time there is a large variation in coil diameter and because of that there may be chances of buckling that's why the while selecting the value of c or a spring index it should be within the limit or you can take in between 4 to 12 and generally adopted value in the range of 6 to 9 and if you don't know any value while assuming it you can assume it as 8 So already this topic or the part already covered by Professor V K Patil. Then what do you mean by pre-length? Then what do you mean by compressed length? What do you mean by solid length? How to find out the solid length? Solid length means E N T into D N T means total number of coils into wire diameter of the spring. Then compressed length. Then uh, how to find out the pre-length? Pre-length means compressed length plus delta. Then solid compressed length means solid length. Plus total axial gap plus delta. Then total gap means N T minus one into gap between edges and coil. Already all these points discussed by Professor V K Party. Then what do you mean by pitch distance between the axial distance between the edges and coil in a compressed state of spring that is given by pre length upon N T minus one. Then stiffness. You know the stiffness word that is you know very well that is force per unit deflection or force required to produce. Unit deflection that is P by delta that is stiffness. 
but here the there are many you know the nomenclature used for the stiffness of the spring that is the rate of spring gradient scale simply spring constant all these are same one then uh, there are two terms related to spring coils active coil inactive coil active coil means which contribute to spring action and inactive coil means the it only gives supports or it does not contribute to spring action is called inactive coils the how to find out the inactive coil that is nt total number of turns minus n mean number of active turns then while selecting it again you have to take the care number how to find out the number of active turns for that purpose styles of ends are used you know very well there are four which is given according to is code that is plane end plane end ground square end and square end ground end then stress deflection uh, stress deflection equation again by using that we have to consider this is spring wire as a rod then we have to carry out the analysis and find out the shear stress or torsional shear stress in the bar again here if we are going to wound this or the coil this the bar then you will find the nature is like a spring and because of that curvature some stresses are going to additional stresses are going to induce in it and what would be the effect of this additional stresses along with the pure tor tor torsional shear stress that we have to take into account that's why here to take into account this uh, combined effect of the curvature as well as the direct uh, uh, shear stress here walls factor is introduced and again this walls factor which is given by 4c minus 1 upon 4c minus 4 plus 0.615 by c in this way already we have carried out all the analysis and all the terms related to helical spring uh, discussed by professor vk patil the load deflection diagram how the energy is absorbed or stored in the spring which is given by 1 rp into delta and you know very well all these things then the arrangement of the spring that is in series and parallel again in series we have to take the care that means we have to add a deflection del is equal to del 1 plus del 2 and in parallel important thing what you have to add the force equal deflection of the combination that means p is equal to p1 plus p2 and based on that you can find out the relation for the stiffness or combined stiffness for series as well as the parallel collection in some application you will find all you know such arrangement is made to save the space to change the rate of spring or to provide fail safe system and that's why we have to use the springs in series and parallel collection then spring materials you know very well the while selecting the material you have to take the care so that uh, care means it should possess some of the you know uh, properties and, uh, and their application that means load deflection how much is the deflection that is the important thing then stiffness of that material how much is the strength of that material and based on that you have to select the material and generally three to four materials are used for the springs one is the patented cold on steel second one is the oil hardened and tempers spring steel wires then oil hardened and temper steel wires including alloy and stainless steel wires i don't want to go in detail but you should know based on that the uh, tensile strength values are given and you know very well as the wire diameter increases the tensile strength is also going to decrease and based on that there is one relation empirical relation uh, given by the researcher here that based on that you will get the uh spring trial error method or you can find out the another factor also or acut you can take based on that also then in some of the cases how to select the factor of safety for spring generally the factor of safety in design of spring is usually taken as 1.5 or less and why it is low because you will find uh, while designing it the springs operate with well-defined deflection some you know the it's a guided way that's why it operates well defined deflection and therefore force acting on spring and the corresponding stresses can be precisely calculated if it's precisely calculated that means no need to take a factor of safety larger or greater that's why it should be minimum one that is 1.5 or less and second one uh, in case of helical compression sink uh, that means close gap between the coils that we have to take into account and based on that we are going to assume afos should be within the limit that is 
five. All these are the points discussed by Professor V. K. Patil during, you know, during. I have not uh, Akash. I have not started PPT. Just I am recapping all the things discussed by Professor V. K. Card V. K. Patil. Okay, I don't want to tell all the things here. So I would like to focus on design procedure of helical spring. Now I am starting. Now here the, the learning objective of the today's session is design helical spring. How we are going to design? Because whatever the nomenclature discussed by Professor V. K. Patil, based on that, whatever the relations uh, already derived during earlier sessions, we are going to use all these uh, the relations to find out the spring dimensions. Spring dimensions means uh, wire diameter, then coil diameter, or the mean diameter of the spring. Then uh, you know other important parameter is the or you can the spring index also is having the relation of that capital D band the small d that we are going to find out but to how to start uh, how to design a helical spring that is important and for that purpose here the main objective for design of the helical spring so first of all the one important point that we have to take into account that is spring should possess sufficient strength to withstand external load that should be one of the criteria while designing it then second criteria required load deflection characteristics and you know very well that load deflection characteristics so if you are going to increase the load and deflection you know very well it is going to increase in this in proportional you might have seen and whatever the area under that curve you will get the energy stored in the, the spring also might be discussed by professor uk patil this is the issue i have required load deflection and third important point spring should not buckle under external load the, these are the main three objectives or the criteria while designing the helical spring that we have to take into account and based on that while designing the spring that means what we have to do so there are main three important parameters that is wire diameter main coil diameter and number of active terms plays important role and by changing these parameters we can design number of springs for a different applications but what is happening here the wire diameter and mean coil diameters uh, we will get by using load stress equation and number of active turns by load deflection equations try to understand load deflection equations try to understand this is the one thing so here these three parameters are important and in design of spring that we have to find out again in the spp examination or other examination or whatever the parameter they are going to ask you to calculate it or determine it accordingly you can do it but if anyone is going to ask you design a spring for that particular application the first of all whether it's a helical compression helical tension torsional spring or a leaf spring what is this application then that spring should possess this is the objective and then wire diameter mean coil diameter number of active turn plays important role and for that purpose to find out it you have to take the you have to use the load stress equation and load deflection equation then and then you are going to find out their dimensions try to understand now i am going to discuss the procedure here procedure already you have gone all the you know the nomenclature here but look at this year one bike is shown in here suspension sit on one single you know the suspension which is shown here look at the cursor here this is known as the mono suspension and in some of the bikes you might have seen here the dual suspension towards this side and opposite to that here another side here you'll find another you know the suspension it's a dual suspension why i am showing but in some cases only one you know the position of this uh, mono suspension the position of this dual suspension is a vertical one it's a inclined one but is having the impact here you know the a yes, suppose the distance when we are going to this spring that time this wheel and the, you know the cover here or distance between these two plays the important role whatever may be the deflection of the spring here but the important point here how much is this a but in this case directly you will get that deflection is equal to this distance that means the basic requirement for uh, the design of spring for a given application how much is the maximum spring force that we should know or if we don't know that we have to first of all find out 
and second one corresponding or required deflection of the spring how much spring is going to deflect that means p and p and delta plays important deflection means depth again important point here in some of the cases maximum spring force and stiffness may be given but you know the stiffness k is equal to small k is equal to force per unit deflection delta so if k is given p is given you know very well del means deflection that means whatever may be the things but basic requirement you should know p or you should know how much is the delta or you should know the k if one or two known you can find out easily k or k or p known you can find out del or deflection these are the requirement and if it's not given you can assume otherwise it's not possible to do the calculation to find out the, or the dimensions of the springs also try to understand so it's a first step or basic requirement in design of spring then uh, look at this the so first of all you should know the p how much is the spring force or maximum spring force and second one is the deflection then here step by step all the you know the steps i have taken from the vivendari's book in systematic way it's given i would like to discuss today all this thing so first of all what you have to do select suitable spring material as i have discussed there are four to five materials patented then tempered then cold on then alloy without alloy and stainless steel wire steel wire out of that you have to select the appropriate material because you know in patented cold on steel wire where the percentage of carbon is more in second one uh, the percentage of carbon is less which is used in case of walls in third one is the alloy is used and the, all the charts are available in data book accordingly you can select suitable spring material for particular application try to understand then once you have selected the spring material next step is find out the ultimate tensile strength from data now why data and it's very important now here again if i am going to say here i am going to draw here in data book uh, related to you know the spring you will find the wire diameter is given here small d and here tensile strength is given in newton per mm square as the wire diameter increases this tensile strength is going to decrease but there is no linear relation try to understand this uh, wire diameter and this uh, tensile strength does not have uh, proper uh, relation proper relation and here in some of the you know the researcher and designer given the based on the regression analysis uh, they found one empirical relation between the and this uh, tensile strength and one formula is given to find out the value of this is it also but here according to is code indian standard for 1000 or 4454 1981 the value of permissible shear stress value of permissible shear stress for the spring wire that we have to take by using the relation tau is equal to in the range of 0.30 su2 or 0.5 or it is in between so you can use 0.30 su2 or point to pi zero yes u t also no problem this is according to is try to understand so once you know the material once you know the s u t so you can easily find out this tau tau means permissible shear stress try to understand then again here assume suitable value of spring index and you know value very well spring index c is equal to capital d by small d capital d means mean coil diameter small d means wire diameter so what we have to do we have to assume it and as i have discussed uh, earlier the value of c it is in the range of 4 to 12 don't go below 3 don't go more than 15 also i have already discussed the things so what would happen if it's less than 3 curvature effect excessive stresses if it's uh, 15 14 then because of their variation in uh, capital d may be problem of buckling that's why it should be within the range of uh, 6 to 12 written in books but you can select in the range of 6 to 9 and generally i am going to select here yet here i have written look at this here to 4 to 8 yet is good if it's though you you don't know the value of c so you can take 8 is a good or c is equal to 8 
and for wall and clutch uh, if application is wall and clutch you can select c is equal to 5 also it's given in data book according to this code i am stating all the things according to this code. right once you know the value of c so what you have to do you know very well walls factor walls factor is given by 4c minus 1 upon 4c minus 4 plus 0.615 upon c so you, suppose it's assume as a 8 that you have to assume so you can put here c is equal to 8 c is equal to 8 c is equal to 8 you will get k is equal to all spectra and it takes the care of curvature effect as well as the direct stresses also okay <clears throat> and once you will get the all factor, next step is determine the wire diameter d but how to determine it i will elaborate for that purpose you know this relation tau is equal to k in bracket 8 pc upon pi d square again here you know the professor vk patil might be explain this you know the uh, if wire is unwound it's a bar length is pi d n here d by 2 subjected to force p or a year half side here or you can say d by 2 here d by 2 and the force p and then you can sort it so you will get here the torsional shear stress the before that mt is equal to pd by 2 then how to find out this uh, tau for that purpose you have to substitute the values and then you will get 8 pc by pi d square value and then we are we are multiplying by the k walls factor to take the care of curvature and direct traces uh, in spring so by using this equation tau is equal to k 8 pc upon pi d cube so you know the tau permissible k walls factor you will get from this equation c you have assumed 8 P, which is uh, I have already told you should know the P or K. So what you will get here? D. So you, you will get D square or D is equal to something value you will get. And once you will get the D, you know very well how to find out the mean coil diameter because C is equal to capital D by small d. So once you know the small d, once you know the C means you have assumed. So what you will get? Capital D. Capital D means mean coil diameter. You will get this value here. Capital, capital D that is mean coil diameter. This is step number six. Then next important point, what you have to do? You have to determine the number of active coils. Number of active coils. And how to find out? So for that purpose, you know this deflection, load deflection equation. This is the deflection and this is the load. The deflection or D or we can say delta is directly proportional to P and as well as delta is directly proportional to D also try to understand. It's a load deflection equation I am going to use by using this load deflection equation what you have to do you know very well delta is equal to 8 p d cube into n upon g d raised to 4 where d is the deflection p is the force d is the mean coil diameter n is the number of active coils and then uh, g g is the modulus of rigidity and for a steel wire its value is that you have to take 81,370. If you don't know, you can take 81,000, no problem. Try to understand in case of C, Newton per mm square. Newton per mm square. That is important. So you can substitute G. D already, you know very well. You have calculated by using earlier equation. You know P, you know D, and delta. The first step, you should know the P and delta. Then and then you can easily find out active terms or coil, active coils here. Yeah. So by using this load deflection, you will get N. Yeah, try to understand. What you will get? N. Yeah. Once you will get the N, yeah, then what you have to do? You have to decide the style of ends. Maybe. Now here three to uh, four styles are given in book. Vivi Vandari's book. Based on that, these styles are plane end, plane and ground end, square end, square and ground end. And for plane end, number of active turns are nt, plane ends ground that is nt by half or 0.5, nt minus 0.5. Then square end nt minus 2 and square ground nt minus 2. I will explain that table. I have included in PPT also. Then based on this style, what you have to do? You have to decide the number of active turns. And once you know the number of active turns, so you can easily find out the total number of coils that is the nt and based on that you will get the nt and once you will get the nt you have to find out the solid length solid length means nt into d 
and once you will get the solid link last one what you have to do actual deflection you can find out the same relation we are going to use but here what you have to do you have to put the value of this n means active oil and after that there is a small variation you will get the delta i will explain during that you know the problem also you will get the idea how to use it these relations because we are using the same here by using the substituting the delta we are finding out the n based on that and deciding the style of paint so again you are find out the total number of coils from total number of coils and inactive and active we have you will get the active tons again and there may be sometimes 7.6 ton and uh, generally we are taking instead of 7.6 uh, we are converting into 7 and because of that this delta is going to change that's why actual deflection because of this you know the digit that we have to find out by substituting the value 7 then we will get once again the delta that's why again same thing that same relation we are going to use that deflection and load equation by using that we are going to calculate the actual deflection and here style of ends i have included in the slide plane end one is a plane end grounded square end and square end grounded here square end ground now here if the end is uh, plane end then number of active turns nt means total number of coils plane end ground nt minus 1 by 2 means nt minus 0.5 you will get number of active turn then square ends nt minus 2 and square ends ground nt minus 2 try to understand so while solving the problem what you have to do you have to read problem statement carefully in statement design is spring having a plain end or plain end ground end that's why you have to read problem statement carefully and based on that you have to take to use the relation to calculate the number of active turns try to understand very simple one but you have to read the carefully and write down the given data based on that you can decide which relation you are going to use for the number of active turns okay i hope you are getting these points then next one based on this you have to decide and then you have to find next important step here determine the pre length of the spring and what do you mean by the pre length if there is no any load acting on the spring and pre length is given that is the solid length plus total gap plus delta total gap means this is the axial gap in between the, the spring coil now here what you have to do these three points are very important might be discussed by professor vk patil once again i would like to discuss today the assumed gap of one to two mm between adjacent coil adjacent coil I mean this is one turn and this is suppose this is second one suppose this is one and this is the second one so what is the gap here maybe one to two mm try to understand one to two mm but in some of the books is written 0.5 to two mm but as per my knowledge, you can take in between 1 to 2 mm, no problem. Then spring is under the action of maximum load. And we have to maintain the gap here, this gap. So that's why 0.5 to 2 in some of the books is given. Then total axial gap between the coil that you have to find out. Here between the 2, then 3, how much is the total gap? So in uh, to, to find out this total gap, NT, total coils here, minus 1 into gap between the adjacent. Suppose you have assumed. 2 mm, so you can multiply it by 20 minus 1 into 2. If you have assumed 1.5 or 1, accordingly you find out the total gap. And some of the cases, instead of calculating the total gap, what you have to do, this total axial gap is taken as 15% of the maximum deflection. 15% means 15 upon 100. That is 15% and into deflection. Then you will get the total gap. And this total gap you will get here also by using this or directly you can take 15 percent of the deflection this is another so by using these two relation you what you will get you will get the total gap and once you know the total gap once you know the solid length and delta deflection so you can easily find out the spree that is pre length and once you will get the pre length next point is determine the pitch of the coil and how to find out the pitch of the coil it's again very simple which of the coil you know very well is the distance or axial distance between the adjacent coil and this is uh, that you have to find out by using the expression pre length upon nt minus one pre length upon nt minus one try to understand this is very important 
then once you will get the p then what you have to do at the last you have to find out the rate of spring or stiffness and how to find out this gd raised to 4 upon 8 into d cube into n by using this expression you can find out the k and again here the final step what we have to do whether the spring guide is required or not that you have to decide and how to decide it for that purpose we have to use a important relation and these are uh, this relation uh, these relations are given here and these relations are what are these relations now we are what you have to do you have to check whether the spring guide is required or not for that purpose use first relation pre length upon mean diameter that ratio you have to find out pre length upon mean coil diameter if this pre length upon mean coil diameter is less than or equal to 2.6 the guide is not required guide means you know very well suppose in suspension system is a damper and here is spring that means spring is guided here at the middle try to understand sometimes in some of the hollow cylindrical part here spring is inserted it guides the spring that is guide is required or not and if this ratio pre length to the mean coil diameter if it's greater than 2.6 guide is required try to understand that you have to decide whether guide is required or guide is not required because why these guides uh, required or not required if length of the spring is too long so what would happen it may buckle and for that purpose to have a spring buckle proof we have to use a uh, guide or such a buckle to have a buckle proof for the spring springs are guided in a sleeve or over an arbor and that is decided by using these relations pre length upon mean coil diameter less than 2.6 guide is not required pre length upon mean coil diameter if greater than 2.6 guide is required this is about the what all the or design procedure of helical spring helical spring thank you i have referred vibhavandari's book for this you know the design procedure thank you if you have any query please contact us